Howdy, folks. It's a Saturday morning. There's racing today at Turfentane on the inside track. It is the 16th of July. Good to be with you today. And good to be joined by Lyle Cooper on the show for the Saturday racing at Turfentane. We're on the inside track, Lyle. And both you and I will be at the course today, which is great news. So we'll be working together not only now, but later on as well. And uh, it's a good track and it's a bit nippy, but it's expected to get up to about 19 degrees again today. Yeah, one thing it hasn't been, Nico, is nippy. I'll tell you what, this July at Turfentine in the Val has been very pleasantly warm, I can tell you. It's been the most magnificent winter, but that might be worrying for summer because it hasn't been cold out there, Nico. Yeah, well, not not uh, freezing cold as we know it, but yeah. during the course yeah. of the day, the days have been very pleasant, haven't they? They have, but you, you, you're you about 100 meters off the ground there, so it's probably colder up there where you I call from. I think it will be a little bit cooler yeah. there. We're, we're on the inside track today, so we're in those private boxes there where we yeah. commentate out of. Anyway, Lyle, um, firstly, what does the card look like today? What is your impressions of the, yeah. of the nine races today? I like the card very much. I did struggle to find bankers. I think it's, you can go light in a few legs, but I didn't find standout bankers later in the card. Um, but as you and I go through it, we might just find one or two for the punters. I, I like this card. Okay. Well, I have gone through most of it, and I say most, being just over 50% of it, um, mm -hmm. because I'm relying on you for the later races. But I have looked at the first half of the card, and I'm hoping okay. you can guide us in the right direction for the rest of them. I am going to share the betting with you first up, and then I'll run through the Good. changes as we go through it race by race. So race number one, there are no changes in the first of the day. And that is, as we can see, about four hours, 22 minutes away from now. 10 past 12 is the off time. And it is a maiden plate over a mile. Now, the favorite has come in for a lot of support. So this is Ashley Fortune's total protection from 14 to 10, currently 6.3 to 10, 13 to 20 in the original terms, I think, is the, is the price of this. And then it's 33 to 10, number one, clap of thunder. So they're backing this like it's known already that it's going to win. Yeah, I, I think that's that's right, Nico. Total protection, the son of ideal world, drawn three, that fourth behind Acorn and debut, very decent uh, debut, three winners from that form line. And then last time out, just behind total protection was Haya Fiata E Kuto. Yeah. Was behind total protection. Yeah. Came and won a magnificent race on Thursday and is quite highly thought of. So I think total protection is very hard to beat. Seven main mission, one clap of thunder, and Lord of Light to fight out that second spot. But for me, best bet on the card, right? Yeah, so that's that's interesting. I also think he's got a big, big chance. Of course, he's related to a horse that runs later on called uh, Prince Evelynoff uh, out of that mare, Lizzie Arden. But there's one other horse I wanted to just bring to your attention, and it's Rank Outsider. It's 33 to 1. It's number five player. Now, you'd know, being in the golfing world, the colors are Gary player here. This horse has had two runs, but been rested. Obviously, he had his fair share of problems, but his first run wasn't too bad, and then he went off. I don't know if Richard Free's going to ride today. Do you have any? I know he wasn't riding yesterday in in uh, PE, yeah. but well, I haven't um, heard anything. Uh, that's good news. So he's probably on his way. I hope. Yeah, I, I, I don't see anything untoward. Um, no. It may come through later on. But do you give us any form of chance whatsoever? Well, not against the favourites, um, but I, I like your value here for a place. Uh, certainly one to include at a big price. Yeah. Um, on form loans, sure, he's going to have to really improve to come through yeah. and beat the favourite, I thought. Yeah. I just thought, um, mm. I remember liking him a bit on his second start um, after that work riders run where he ran third on debut. And I think the step up in triple also suit him. I'm going to keep a close eye on him. I won't let okay. him run loose for, for the places. Um, number uh, five player there. Okay, let's Good go fun. to race two. So Lyle's bankering that, and I think uh, I'm also rubber stamping that. I think total protection looks hard to beat and take what price you can. Race two is a maiden plate fillies and mares over a mile. Let's go to the changes first up here. Yeah? Blinkers go on number three, Bally Cotton. And number seven, Summerland, has a compression mask on. Even money, this favorite tabby cat, number eight, for uh, the Azzies, uh, from five to four into even money. Um, nice move, and nice to have Randall Simons back riding today. So he's yeah. just got the one ride. It's his return to riding after a lengthy spell out the saddle. It'll be great to call him home today. Nine to four, nice move. And then five to one, Skyfall, number six. 
Your thoughts on the second opening leg of the bye pot? Well, I thought it was a match race here, Nico, but I'm going to lean slightly towards the one nice move. Randall Simons, hopefully he can make a winning comeback. That form line behind Killshot is a nice one. He didn't run a bad debut behind Prairie Falcon. And then second behind Rock the Fox last time over, over the 16. I think uh, Randall's probably been working the source at home. Drawn nicely at five. That's the, the filly for me to beat. And of course, big respect for Tabby Cat. Good second oh. last time. Uh, Samanga Kamala, obviously, we know how well Samanga's riding for the Azzy team. So, yeah, one and eight in that order. I'll put them both into, into everything, Nick, and we should double up. Okay, yes. Now, just my assessment of Tabby Cat's rating. I know that two rolls, obviously, mm. as you know, are not um, rated in the card. But on my assessment yes. of Tabby Cat, I'm putting her at a gross rating of about 89. If she's got a gross merit rating of 89, her net merit rating comes into 70. Nice moves will be 71. So you can see with just a point between them and four kilos, I'm definitely with Tabby Cat at evens. Um, but yeah, I, have this, I, I rate, rate nice move a very nice sort, who's a year older. And I think... Should, yeah, should be a bit of a, bit of a match race there, shouldn't I, it? I think, I think I'm leaning towards Tabby Cat. But like you say, the two horses, I think, will fight it out. Those two will be the two involved there. Absolutely. Okay, let's move on to this third race. And for me, Lyle, the races that I looked at, this is the race of the day. This, for me, like this is the race of the day. I really like the looks of this race, and I think it's going to be a grandstand finish. Scratch is number three, Great Affair, who was quoted at eight to one in the market. Compression mask on the filly number four, Flying First Class. This, I think, has the makings of a great race. You've got Lamborghini, who's trying to qualify for the Gold Cup um, and, and make it. I, I think that they're tr still wanting to put him into the Gold Cup, which is... Uh, what is it now? 13, 14, two weeks away. It's exactly two weeks from Correct. now. It's two to one. Nine to four flying first class, the filly. Four to one white fang and nine to two about Arlington action. Those look to be the principal runners here with the scratching of great affair. How do you rate them? Well, the, the, the betting might actually be spot on here, but I am going to go for flying first class, of course, at the weights, Nico. Uh, Cabela Matignani for David Nieberhazen. A length and a quarter behind Lamborghini last time. Five and a half kilograms better off. The uh, three runs back, she ran over the course and distance and won in that time of 165.74. Um, so I think uh, for me at the weights, 51 and a half kilograms, she's going to think she's free. I think she's the one to beat. Lamborghini, utmost respect. And this is the horse that Lawrence Werner's thought would never win a race. They, they really yeah. didn't fancy this. Yeah. And he's turning out to be such a good little stay. And it was a good win last time. So obviously he could still be anything. And uh, White Fang, after that win last time, notably White Fang won in 164.62. So uh, that's got to be a runner. And then Arlington Action is also one kilogram better off with Lamborghini. If I had to narrow it down, I'd probably go four and five, Nico, if I had to uh, had put my head on a blocker. Now, you mentioned uh, Kamala riding extremely well. Now, he rode this exceptionally well last time at White Fang, didn't he? I mean, it beat mm -hmm. Arlington in action comfortably. It was always in front. And I just feel that the way the race pans out, who's going to go to the front? I think both Lamborghini and White Fang, now they're drawn together at six and seven with a scratching of great affair. I'm trying to work out who's going to go off to the front and who's going to be too strong. I think White mm -hmm. Fang is the value in the race, personally, at four to one. Because I think if he dictates the matters here, with Kamala riding the way he is at the moment, he mm. might just just take a, a march and, and lead them in and not be able to be caught. I, I get your feeling on flying first class's weight, 51 and a half. And, and of course, in middle stakes races, um, the sex allowance of two and a half kilos apply. So that brings flying first class. And even a horse like Ariam, who ran during the week again, yeah. uh, into Correct. the race, because there's not much between them on earlier form. But... I hear you saying flying first class, marginally out of Lamborghini, but I don't think yes. White Fang is out of it. And that's why I'm expecting those three to go to the line yeah. with little between them. And I think that well, there we go. the prices, with Lamborghini being half the odds of White Fang, I'd rather be with White Good. Fang, to be honest. I hear you. Yeah. Four, five, and two. And yeah. White Fang's not the worst weight at all in the race either, Yannicka. Absolutely not. Even though he carries 58 and has to concede weight. Mm. Um, he's that strong, Correct. relentless front runner. What did he carry last time? Just quickly. He, he carried 56. 56. He's up two. Yeah, he's up two. Yeah. 
Anyway, that was a on, very- on straight time. On straight times, the last time they all won course and distance, White Fang does boast the strongest time, followed by Lamborghini and flying first class. That's, of course, taking uh, the weights not into consideration. Yeah, yeah. If you take the weights into consideration, it puts them pretty much uh, level pegging. So that's why I'm looking forward to well, it. I think in fact, flying first team. class, flying first class carried 60 when she got that 165.7. Right. So and now she's got 51 and a half. And half so I am, I am going to stick with her as my first selection. Well, look, she's also nominated to run in the in the Gold Cup mm-hmm. eh, in two weeks' time. So she's also an engine for David Neves and insane Kirsten. So, um, yes. yeah. Well, we'll wait to see what uh, happens over there. It does. It has the makings of a very nice race. Race Absolutely. four jumps at ten to two. It is the start of today's pick six, and in race four, compression masks on four. You can't hurry, love. And six, Prince Evelyn off. Looking at the betting, it's thirty-three to ten. Jamala number seven. Jamala is at thirty-three to ten. You've got four to one. Origami nine to two. Razor Hallelujah. Six to one, Yukon, Harry Love. Seven to one, Green Haze, and eight to one, London Roads. Very evenly matched, I thought, too. This uh, uh, fourth race, which is a merit-rated ninety-six handicap. How do you rate them? Well, it's a, it's a good little race. This again, my first selection, in fact, is going to be Razor Hallelujah, Nicker. Candice Dawson, King in the Mellow, drawn to. I see you nodding. I think you probably like this one with me. And um, that that second by Base Yeah, last time, excellent run. The second by Naval Guard, excellent run. Um, that, that run, that penultimate, has produced Noble Guard times three, Cool by Cal, Duke of Sussex times two. And um, this is a horse that's run a length behind Blackthorn. And if you go all the way back early in the career, there was three and a half lengths behind Origami mm. and one kilogram better off, one kilogram. So I'm going to straight away flip the page and say, I think Origami is a big runner too. Mm. So I think for me, nine and, uh, nine and two are my big ones uh, with others to follow them for that third spot. You, yeah, I think so you I, agree with me. Yeah, I do agree with you. Um, strange enough, that is my first choice in the race. Razor, hallelujah. I'm not concerned about the fact that it's running 11 days apart because mm. its last run was on the 5th of July. That makes it 11 days to today. But if you look back to December last year, the 18th of December and the 30th of December ran second to Blackthorn and came out 12 days later. And beat Correct. the green dogs yep. uh, in a tough race. I think this could well be the right one. I like the way, I love the way this horse accelerates. It really flashes yep. up. Um, and Demela has had, had a couple of rides in it, I think, for a, a second he has. earlier on a fifth. But I'm, yes. I'm liking that price nine to two. I, I think I'm going to side with you, Razor Hallelujah. Strange enough, I Good. put this horse, You Can't Hurry Love, into the race with uh, Gavin Lorena. Um, yes, you know, Gavin, as well as another jockey in terribly good form, nine winners since July Day. Since July Day, nine winners. He's he's been riding them mm. uh off the board. So I thought that was a runner, and I thought, as you said, Origami. Now, Origami, um, and Razor Hallelujah, as you said, and um, have got some collateral form. There's also some collateral form from Cape Town. Um, in fact, not from Cape Town, from Durban with others, but I think Origami is a runner. And then I think Jamala and Captain are pretty much level pegging. I'm surprised to see Captain at 14 to 1, because if you go on Jamala and Captain's run in June last year, on the 23rd of June, mm. look at that yep. run. That puts Captain right on top of Jamala. I know Jamala has come out and won mm. two in Joburg, but uh, that's, Three kilograms. That, that's sitting at 14 to 1. And yep. I think that's a huge price. So I made this open, but like you, Razor Hallelujah, clearly my first choice. I like it. Good. I just I must just mention to the punters out there that um, Tony Peter has given confidence on his uh, t- on his comments about Origami, yeah. saying that he has improved further. So okay. res- big respect for that. Yeah. And as we know, that ran to the stable companion Naval Guard last time out, and Kennedy's picked up the ride. Kennedy's also riding in brilliant. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, let's go to yes. race five, which runs at 25 past two. It's a pinnacle stakes over the 1600 meter trip. In race five, number one, Sovereign Spirit has blinkers, no earmuffs on the two out of the darkness, no blinkers. An important late change for number six, Sound of Summer, no blinkers today, which is interesting. Now, yep, Tony mentioned that. Did he mention that? Yeah, they've taken the blinkers yeah. off. I think that's a great move because I didn't like it with the blinkers on. 
Now yeah. it's 18 to 10 favorite sound of summer. And I think it comes into the blinkers off two to one castle town, five to one out of the darkness and six to one sovereign spirit and express from the U S who's now out of the Wai Shong mowing yard. Small yes. field. What are we in for? You know, this, I'm going to be so boring here. I think the betting's right, Nico. I think number six is the horse to beat. Number mm -hmm. three, Castle Town for second. Express from the US, out of the darkness, and Sovereign Spirit will follow them home. But uh, Sound of Summer, I, I do think it's the right one here. Warren Kennedy, drawn five. That run behind El Mutano was a cracking one. Blackthorn was in that race. Ingla Moo was in that race. Of course, El Mutano's come through and won again. And on the last run, Sound of Summer was one and a quarter lengths behind Castle Town and four kilograms better off. So it should turn around with Castle Town, who's very consistent. So for me, six from three, and then I'd probably go with um, Express from the US, your your horse that's yeah. been slightly disappointing. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's due I for a good do. run. I think he's due for yeah. a good run, Express from the US. If you look back at that Donald McDonald run uh, in November last year, he's got Sound of Summer actually thumped on that run because he's four, four kilograms, kilos, yeah. He's four kilos mm. better off on that run to Donald McDonald. But on that day, Sound of Summer was wearing blinkers. That's why I say the change, the equipment change without blinkers makes Sound of Summer thrown into the race here with a big chance. Yeah. I do rate Castletown. I think the source has finally got the hang of it. Um, we'll yeah. all remember the day that he lost his weight, poor old Cabela. Yeah. Um, yeah. And he's made up for it, I think, in a couple of starts since right since then. But I think this horse is an upward tra trajectory. I believe that Castle Town is a massive runner there too. So like you, I think the winner will come from three or six and I'm expecting yep. five to improve. I rate, I, I, I see it very much the same as you there. Good, yeah. Pretty the betting spot on probably. Right, then we go to Lyle Cooper's soliloquy here because I'm not going to participate in this is a race of six to nine. I'm relying on you completely here. Race six, is a classified stakes at 3 p.m. over 1,200 meters. Scratched or seven, just as rich and eight meteoric. Uh, compression mask is on number nine, Caruso. Five to two, the pair, coming in hot and Corvette captain, both at five to two and nine to two, baby don't hurt me and meet the captain. Your feelings on those four? Are you going for one of them to win? Right, so, yeah, it's, it's not the easiest race. So just a, a stat again, I love my stats. 65% of races over 1,200 meters around the turn are won by the horses that have a draw one to four. Right. So my first selection is going to be Baby Don't Hurt Me, the daughter of twice over. She's the tie best weighted horse in the race. She's drawn one. Although she was beaten by Meet the Captain back on the 28th of June, she needed yes. that run. And look at the draw turnaround show. She's got the one. Meet the Captain's got the eight. Merit running down to a 66. I think she'll run well. So Baby Don't Hurt Me is my top selection. Number six, meet the captain, not liking the draw, but loving the jockey. Yeah. Um, obviously in good form at the moment, running well. And then, of course, those two, we can't leave the top two out. Coming in hot, Gavin Arena for Farney Broncos cannot leave that out. And, of course, Cor uh, Corvette captain, horrible draw, uh, kicking the mellow board and has got some good form. So it's not easy. I think those four, as you mentioned, Nico, for me, five, six, and then one and two. And I'd throw in a horse like Caruso maybe for a bit of value. Okay, that's an interesting take on it. Um, baby, don't hurt me, your top choice ahead of meet the captain. Uh, I'm still looking here to see whether Faree is making the trip to Joburg today. We're, we're doing the show just after 8 a.m. in the morning, and I don't see any changes on him. So we take that Faree is riding, and uh, Lars tipping the five, baby, don't hurt me, ahead of six, meet the captain. And then third, you're saying either one or two. Which do you prefer? Sure, I'll probably go with number one because of the draw, Nico. The, the 10 yeah. draw oh, over 1,200 is just horrible. So I'll go number one. Okay, so the value definitely with Baby Don't Hurt Me there from the Peter Stable. Yes. It, of course, broke the definitely. record on uh, Thursday. You were there, were you? I think you were. Yeah. I didn't see it the was lovely to be part of it. It, it was an honour to be part of it. Yeah. I see you setting the record now for the most number of uh, winners trained in a season in South Africa. So that's fantastic stuff for Paul Peter. And he's going to continue to surpass that record and let's see what the final number ends up at okay race seven is a graduation played over 1200 meters uh, scratched off five drawn field and eight ridge runner come out of uh, race number seven those are the changes there so drawn field was 12 to one ridge runner was one of the fancies now constable is the favorite marginally ahead of tuscan winter and uh, then after that you've got sound of hounds 
and then the rest of them. So is this a race between Constable and Tuscan Winter? I would think so. With Mathis, uh, we've got to just mention Mathis, but let's start off with them with two Tuscan Winter. I really didn't like the draws, but now that the five and the eight are scratched, Tuscan Winter will move into five, <coughs> excuse me, and Constable into six in a small field. Now it's not too serious. So yeah. I think Tuscan Winter could be the right one here. Yeah. Um, did beat um, number one, Constable, if you go back to the 26th of March, quite cosily, and I could win a race like this. I, I think this Tuscan Winter is even a potential banker, but we'll have to be Constable in best form, running well. Richard Faree, uh, we, we know how well he is, nicely weighted. And then number four, I just I, I was going to sort of brass this horse a bit, Nico. But no, no, I hang on. So I, 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 my apologies. I completely yeah. missed this horse in the betting, and I've got to mention it. It's actually pronounced Matisse, I think. I think it's... I Thank think you. it's pronounced Matisse, and the reason is because I pronounced it when I commentated on its first run when it beat Lemmy Go comfortably. I pronounced it as Mathis, but I think it's okay. the French, a French word Matisse. Matisse. Um, okay, thank you. Which I think means gift from God, if I've, my okay. uh, my research is correct. And it's owned by well, Brittany, Brittany Maestri. Yeah. Um, Hopefully she's there today. Yeah, and I'll speak to Lyle. And because and, uh, Tony pronounced it Mathis, that's why I was just copying him. Yeah, I, I think it is pronounced Matisse, though. I, you know, so it's Bushill Studs horse, but uh, I think they might have named it themselves. So we'll wait to get the rundown. Maybe you can speak to Lyle Maestri or his I daughter, will. Brittany, and uh, find out from them what the story is there. But I think this has got a chance. I think it's got a chance. Uh, Tony, Tony was very bullish. Uh, Nikhail really was going to brass this, but after listening what, to Tony... He, what did he a, say? What did he say? He said, this is a really good horse. Yeah, really good. So that re you know, really worried me that I didn't include it. So I'm certainly yeah. including it now. Two, one, four. That's it for me. Done. I was very impressed when it won its debut at Turf and Dane. That was up the mm. straight. It goes around the turn today, but it does face tough opposition. It's not going to be plain sailing for yeah. him. I think it's a run. He, he did say that. He did say yeah. he's got to beat those top two. Yeah. I mean, when you look mm. at the, the ratings, um, Matisse basically is rated an 80 when you take into account uh, the weight for age here. Um, but it is receiving three kilos and uh, two and a half kilos from the, from the top weights. We'll wait yeah. to see that. that uh, I think it's a race between them. Okay, on to race eight. It's a classified stakes race over 1,200 meters. In race eight, scratch number one, Anfield's Rocket is out. Number four, Princess Sabrina. Now is Alamites in front and a tongue tie. And number six, trust the fire, Alamites in front and unshot behind. Right, the betting has uh, the McQuackers, 33 to 10, with the Letitia's Angel, 33 to 10. Six to, uh, six to one about basically into the future, trust the fire and Roger the Dodger. Eight to one, Moonstrike and Mix the Magic. This looks horrible. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> yes, Nick, and I think they had the wrong favorite with Anfield's Rocket. Although he's been really, really good. Good with 60 kilograms as a two-year-old. I thought he was going to be beatable. Um, so I like number five into the future anyway, before he was scratched. Muzzi for um, the Bortus Fosley team. Again, mm. not loving the draw, but at least it'll move into seven. And that run behind Scott Adita, I like that run there. Beat number nine, Letitia's Angel, on that, on that run there. And with a merit rating down to a 66, I thought could be in the right race here. He's the best weighted boy in the race. I think yes. into the future is my selection. Number seven, Roger the Dodger. Don't let this horse go free. Ignore mm. that last run completely. Draw a line through it. The tongue ties on now because of that. Yes. And I think it could run well here as well. And he's drawn four. So those were my top two here. Then, of course, uh, Letitia's Angel, who is weighted nicely. And only then the McWackers. Um, McWackers, um, not well in here at all, even love though he's drawn one. Doesn't it love this track, doesn't it? He does. Four times yeah. he's run with three wins and he's drawn one. So yeah. he would have a chance. But I, I, did, I was leaning towards the five, the seven, the nine, and then number two. Okay, so your top choice is Into the Future, who's at 11 to two. Six to one, you can basically get about Into the Future's last top selection to beat him at seven, nine, and then two. Is that? Am I reading that right then? That's the Correct. way you're raising exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. I didn't think it went much further than that. Yeah, this race, I, I'm just having a quick look. I don't like it. I think it has the re recipe for a disaster. Uh, it could that be. Um, that's probably the most difficult on the card for me. Okay, on to the ninth and last. This is a merit-rated 68 handicap over 1,450 meters. In race nine, scratches number eight, speech maker, and then quite a few equipment changes. Number one, high moon is unshot, no alamites. 
two catch the green light, a compression mask, six seaways, a Cornell collar goes on, and cheap pieces on number 12 twice as special. The money looks to be for Parker Getrix here from 14 to 1 into 6 to 1. Ran a very good post maiden effort last time out because that was the run to Sir Michael, um, who won really well. That's the money horse. But at the top of the board, Silly Fella, who surely has to be rewarded sooner or later for his consistency. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think this, this is one of the better bets on the card because of that draw. Silly Fella, he could be a banker. Consistent form, dropping and trip, and with Gavin in such fine form and that draw of one, um, he will he will be right there. Mm. The, the slight problem is if you look at that last run, he was a length behind Wind Sock, and he's one kilogram worse. Um, so although Wind Sock's drawn horribly, um, yeah. he, he has to be a bit, a bit of a player as well. Seven Lulu's boy, also a nice run on that last run there behind Pondra Posse, some Mungo from a decent draw of five, and then Parker Getrix. I was actually standing with Chris Juncker when the horse ran seventh, and I was sort of pulling a face like, no, that's okay, Chris. He said, no, that's really good, love. And I was like, yeah, good point, I suppose. That was yeah. a cracking last time out. And this is the horse Parker Getrix that cuts himself up quite badly, Nico. He's actually yeah. a lot better than the form might suggest. He literally cuts himself while he's running. So Chris yeah. has sort of invented this bandage now that's, that stops him cutting himself. So I agree with you that this horse could be some nice value for a place. Yeah. But I thought this, for me personally, from that draw, this is this too is going to be silly fillers day. Yeah, it could be. I, I just thought that this horse has to be rewarded sooner or later for for its consistency. It, it, you know, with Gavin Larina on, he rides so well for Farney Bronkhorst. I mean, if you look at the stats, yeah. I don't know if those are updated, mm -hmm. but five wins from twelve partnering uh, that he's partnered for the for the stable. I thought that that looked good. Now, the reason why they're backing Parker Getrix, obviously, is because he ran in a graduation plate with horses much higher rated than him. And he ran three and three quarter lengths off. So they're obviously saying that he's still running off his rating of 58. But if he runs to what he ran in behind Sir Michael, then uh, they're banking on the fact that he, he may, runs the same type of race. The people that have backed him yes. 14 to under six to one. I, I have my reservations when, when looking at those stats um, and, and, and that sort of thing when they run in plate races because the question is, can they reproduce the runs? There's nothing to suggest they can't, but uh, like you, I'm a, I'm a silly fella man today. What else did you feel? Windsock from a bad draw you said had a chance. What else? Anything yeah. else? Well, Windsock would have, a, would have a big chance. If he had a, if he had a good draw, I'd make yeah. him a serious, serious opposition. Um, the, the, the seven horse, uh, Lulu's boy, I think could be a bit of value from that draw. Samango Kamado notably retains the ride here. Merit rating is okay. And if you look at the average merit rating he was running against, you know, the, the, the run behind JP2000, for instance, the, the run behind Florentine, not bad run. So he's got to just be mentioned. And then uh, just for the quartet and trial practice, don't about number two, catch the green light. But quite a few of them are notably held by number nine, City Fella, uh, mm. besides Windsock. So Silly Fella will more than likely be in the top two. Hopefully he can win. And I thought the danger is five, seven, and maybe number 11. Oh, well, by the way, I'll try and get Chris, I'll try and get uh, Chris Juncker. I'll try and interview him somewhere in the day and chat to him. Yeah, has he only got that one runner today, has he? Uh, let's have a look. Uh, let's let's just... quickly have a look. Chris Juncker. Uh, um, he... yeah, uh, he's got burning ice in the same race. So it's just the last race. Same so race, I don't I don't think he'll be arriving too early, but if you do catch no. him before the last, try and see what he says about it. Um, yeah, I I, I've got uh, Parker Getrix and me are like oil and water. Um, I, I didn't like the horse from day one. I didn't back it when it won its maiden. I didn't follow it last time out. So maybe I'm a bit uh, um, not anti it, but uh, you know maybe I've just got a too much of a judgment call on him. Uh, but I think that Nick, I, must, uh, I must tell you, at least three of these runs you're seeing here in the maidens. He, he, he cut himself yeah. at least three. I'd say more like four. He cut himself very, very badly. So uh -huh. he, he would have won his maiden a long time ago. That it's not that bad. Excuses. Now, in wrapping up, I, I'm listening to, if someone listens to the whole conversation that you and I have had now, there was one horse that we both agreed on fairly strongly, and you'll remember it throughout. So if Neil Thank Andrews you. is yep. listening, if yes. you have to listen to this interview and we didn't speak to him, which horse would he say would be a potential price booster for us today? Not Razor Hallelujah. Correct. Razor Hallelujah. That's the only one that could be a potential. 
Whether or not he chooses it is another story, but that coming out mm -hmm. of this interview would be the evidence, would be the evident choice going on what we've spoken about. Lyle, I really yes. thank you for this morning. I look forward to working with you later on this afternoon. And, uh, okay. and we'll see you at the at, at Turfentane and hope that uh, you'll discard that jacket because it's not like you to feel cold. <laughs> well, I certainly will. Although I'm, I'm, I wear my suits on Saturday, Nick. I'll look quite smart, I hope. Uh, okay. Okay. Well, look forward to seeing you then. Thanks so much, Nalal. Thank you, Nick. Go well. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.